Let me show you the power of linear profiles by turning this raw file into this final image. Feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description. This is the image with the Adobe standard profile applied. And on this photo, I use a linear profile. So what's going on here? The minute we open up a raw file in Lightroom, a profile will be applied. By default, it's Adobe Color. There are many different profiles available and we can choose the one which fits best for our image. For example, I love using Adobe Standard for a little more control over the contrast, Adobe Landscape for more base saturation or Adobe Neutral for the most neutral version of the RAW file. However, saying this is the most neutral version would be a lie. Every Adobe profile adds its own specific tone curve to the image. This means even when using Adobe Neutral, the photo is still slightly manipulated. As some of you pointed out in the comments correctly, to have the most control, you want to use a linear profile. Linear, because there are no tone curve adjustments applied on top. By default, Lightroom does not have a linear profile installed. You have to do that yourself. Very important note, Linear profiles are camera dependent. You must install the right linear profile for your exact camera. For this tutorial, we will be working on a Sony A7 Mark III RAW file. You can find the fitting profile as well as a collection of different linear profiles for different cameras right here or through the link in the description. Once downloaded, head into the profiles menu, click on browse and install the profile. To do that, click on that little plus icon and choose Import Profiles. Once you have extracted that zip archive, you just can click on the profile and hit Import. Once done, go to the profiles. Maybe you have to scroll down a little, but there you can find the linear profile version. If you want this profile to show up in the Profiles drop down menu, make sure to click the star icon in the upper right corner to set it as a favorite. Once all this is done, you can close the profile browser. So this is our image with the linear profile applied. Compared to before, you can see we have lost a lot of color. We have lost a lot of contrast because there are no tone curve adjustments added. We now have a lot more control than we would have with Adobe profiles. But this also means we have to do a lot more work during the editing process to add punch to this image and to make it look nice. So how do I approach this? First, we want to do the tone adjustments, fixing the exposure. I don't want to make it look too flat. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to increase the exposure first, adding a little bit of brightness to the image. I also want to bring up the whites. At the same time, to further push the contrast, I want to bring down the shadows. While I'm adjusting these tone settings, I'm always keeping a close eye on the histogram. You can already see there's some underexposure going on and some overexposure. So I really want to prevent that at this point of the editing process. So to fix the underexposure, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And to prevent overexposure, I'm going to bring down the highlights. Now there might still be a little bit of both going on, but as you can see, as I hover over the indicator for underexposure, it's not really visible. The same goes for the highlights because it's just in a tiny area in that cloud right here. Even though we have adjusted the tone settings, the image is still lacking contrast. So you can see it's already a lot more work to do to give this image some punch. I want to continue by adding a little bit of texture. I'm also going to add clarity and I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze, which will help with the contrast. And since this image is lacking quite a bit of saturation, I'm going to bring up the vibrance and the saturation as well. Now it's getting better. I do think the white balance could use some adjusting. So I'm going to bring up the temperature a little bit, making the shot slightly warmer this way. Okay. So after the basic adjustments, it's still looking very, very flat. And at this point, to give it more contrast, I'm going to use the tone curve. If you have been watching my videos, I very rarely use the tone curve. But for images with the linear profile applied, this is pretty much something you have to do. So let's give this image some punch. 
I want to first create a point for the darker midtone somewhere around here and drag it to the right. I'm only doing very tiny adjustments to be very, very careful. But then I also want to adjust the brighter midtones. So let's say somewhere around here. I want to make them brighter, so I'm going to bring up the point for the brighter midtones like that, which is already looking so much better. Let's work on the darkest blacks. I'm going to grab the point for the blacks and just drag it up slightly. Of course, we will fix underexposure, but again, we will lose contrast. So I'm going somewhere between this point and the point for the darker midtones, create a third point, and just drag it down slightly just to give this image more punch. That's a very, very basic tone curve, but let me deactivate it so you can see the difference from before to after. This has helped quite a bit. Now, besides the tone curve, what we can do as well to make this image pop is, of course, we want to use masks. So let's head into the masking panel and let's start with something simple. I'm going to use a linear gradient targeting the foreground of the landscape like this. And what we can do here is we can bring up the shadows because I want to make this area brighter. And I also want to bring up the whites again just to make this area brighter. The nice thing about this linear gradient is as I bring up the whites, we don't change the bright sky which is already kind of scratching the overexposed range. And for the foreground, we could also use a little more clarity, just like that, wonderful. We can also target a specific color tone to add some more punch. So let's create a color range mask. I'm going to click right here in the blue part of the sky and I'm going to use the refine slider, bring it down a notch to filter out the clouds. And I also don't want to target the mountains in the foreground. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose select sky. With the mask set up, I'm going to simply bring down the exposure. And thus we are adding some real good looking contrast here. Perfect. We can do the same for the foreground. So let's create another color range mask and I'm going to click somewhere in the green highlights which should give us a nice selection. Again, I'm using the refine slider to filter out some of the darker green tones, just like this. And what I want to do here is to bring up the exposure and just add some more highlight and contrast by doing it this way. Wonderful. At this point, I do want to add a little bit of glow as well. So let me use a radial gradient. I'm going to make it really thin and really long like this. Just place it somewhere on top of this mountain, kind of aligning with the lights direction coming in from the left. And what I want to do here is to bring up the blacks. Let's also bring up the whites. This will add overexposure, but I don't really care about overexposure in the white clouds. And finally, I also want to bring down the dehaze for more glow. Wonderful. And finally, I do want to show you a cool trick for midtones contrast, which I learned from Michael Breitung. I'm going to link his channel in the description of this video as well, because he has some amazing videos. So let's create a luminance range mask. And for the midtone contrast, what we want to do, we want to bring down the luminance range on both sides. We're just cutting out the blacks and we're cutting out the highlights. Then we want to adjust the softness of this luminance range a bit by adjusting this thing in the center. So something like this maybe. Now to add midtones contrast, let me deactivate the overlay. What I want to do is I want to bring up the exposure, making the midtones slightly brighter. Then I also want to increase the highlights. Now, since we want to add contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows and we're just kind of stretching the histogram in the area for the midtones this way. So we can add some really nice contrast without risking over or under exposure this way. We can further tweak it by bringing up the whites and we can also bring down the blacks. Just be very, very careful here, but right about here, this looks great. Now at this point, the image starts to look really, really good. Let's compare to before real quick. 
Both images look kind of similar, but if you look closer, for example, right here in the clouds, on the left side, the clouds are blown out and it would be kind of hard fixing it with one of the Adobe profiles. On the other hand, using the linear profile helps us recover a lot of details, even in the brightest area of the image without losing details in the darkest area. Again, compare this dark spot right here to the image on the right. That's a huge difference. But again, the editing process will take a lot more. So let's continue. I want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's open up the color mixer and I want to work on the saturation because I think this image could use some more. I'm going to bring up the yellow tones. I'm also going to bring up the green tones and I want to bring up the blue tones. This looks so much better instantly, but let's also work on the luminance. Here we can kind of dodge and burn the image some more. So I want to bring up the yellow luminance and the green luminance. And this in turn will just make those green areas of the image a little brighter. At the same time, let's bring down the blue luminance to burn the sky, just like this. Wonderful. And that is pretty much it for the editing of this scene using a linear profile in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, the only thing that's left to do is the sharpening. So let's go into the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and increase the amount of sharpening. Done. So that's the finished edit using a linear profile. I guess for this scene, it's kind of hard to understand why linear profiles are so powerful. So let me give you another example. Right here, we have a long exposure, which has a very, very challenging light situation with very harsh highlights and super deep blacks. Using something like Adobe Standard does help, but if we really want to get the most details out of a single raw file, we can just again use the linear profile right here and you can immediately see a big difference. The highlights are very well exposed. However, the histogram is indicating underexposure. So let's quickly fix that using some tone adjustments. First, we want to bring up the exposure, restoring details from the shadows. And at the same time, we are going to bring down the highlights to prevent the sky from being overexposed, just like this. Still, there's a little bit of underexposure going on. So we can fix that by bringing up the blacks. And to add more punch, we can bring up the whites carefully. Again, it would make sense to add a little bit of dehaze to this scene, just to add a little more contrast. We can even use the contrast slider itself for that purpose. And of course, again, we want to use the tone curve. So I'm going to create a point for the midtones right about here. I'm going to drag it down slightly and I'm going to create a point for the highlights kind of creating a simple S curve. I'm also going to drag up the black point slightly and again, create a third point right here, bring down the very dark midtones like this. And just like this, even without any masking, we can nicely save a challenging exposure like this using a linear profile. So I personally rarely use linear profiles, but I think it's, it's good to know they exist and how they work. So I hope this tutorial was interesting and helpful and thank you so much for watching this video.